Thank you for joining me today. My name is Michelle McDonald and I'm the Executive Director of Brain Injury Canada. I'll be talking about brain injury and employment in Canada, a unique perspective. We have a lot to cover in a short amount of time, so we'll be talking about Brain Injury 101, the prevalence, employment and brain injury, survey results, and the path forward. To understand the challenges around employment and the barriers that exist for those individuals living with brain injury, it is important to learn a little bit more about what causes brain injury, how common it really is, and how pervasive the impact is on the person, their family, and every aspect of their life. An acquired brain injury refers to any damage to the brain that occurs after birth and is not related to a congenital or a degenerative disease. There are two types of acquired brain injury, non-traumatic and traumatic. Non-traumatic brain injuries are caused by something that happens inside the body or a substance is introduced into the body that damages brain tissues. This can include aneurysm, brain tumors, cerebral edema, encephalitis, hydrocephalus, strokes, meningitis, and opioid overdose. Traumatic brain injuries are caused by something that comes from outside the body. This includes blows, bumps, and jolts to the head. Causes can include assaults, combat injuries, falls, gunshot wounds, intimate partner violence, motor vehicle accidents, shaken baby syndrome, and sports injuries. The statistics around brain injury are pretty staggering and demonstrate the prevalence across the nation. Traumatic brain injury is a leading cause of disability globally. TBI occurs at the annual rate of 500 out of every 100,000 individuals. That is pro approximately one person injured every three minutes in Canada. And if you include non-traumatic brain injuries, that's close to 4% of the population lives with brain injury. That equates to over 1.5 million Canadians. In the next year, almost 27,000 Canadian women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. An estimated 4,300 new cases with spinal cord injury will occur. Over 4,000 Canadians will be diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. 165,000 Canadians will have a traumatic brain injury. Acquired brain injury affects every part of a person's life. This includes changes to their independence, abilities, work, and relationships with family, friends, and caregivers. But I can't emphasize enough that it is important to always keep top of mind they are a person first. Brain injury does not affect intellect and does not change their need to be valued, supported, included, and engaged. Brain injury differs from person to person and recovery depends on many factors. The effects of brain injury can include cognitive changes, which is how the brain learns, processes information, forms memories, and makes decisions. Physical changes such as mobility, headaches, fatigue, pain, and sensory changes. Emotional uh, impacts can include personality changes, depression, anxiety, and anger. And behavioral changes can include impulsive behavior, aggression, obsessiveness, and sexually inappropriate behavior. I wanted to share a quote from a spouse which clearly shows the massive impact and change brain injury can have on a person. Since my husband's injury, he has no short-term memories. He needs a recipe to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And that recipe includes instructions on where to find the peanut butter, the jelly, and the bread. He re recently learned where the forks and knives are in our kitchen. We've been in this house for 20 plus years before his injury and six years after. Now imagine every aspect of your life now needing step-by-step -step instructions. So now let's move on to employment and brain injury. Most of the work uh, we do at Brain Injury Canada is aimed at individuals who have experienced job interruption or job loss as a result of their brain injury. It is important to emphasize returning to work after brain injury is a process, not an event. And the process begins with the per before the person re-enters the workplace. For some, returning to work may not be possible or even a priority. Emphasis should be on recovery and a return to work based on the person's goals and individual situation. There's also a huge psychosocial aspect of returning to work. This refers to the connection between one's social well-being and one's individual thoughts and behaviors. For some, their identity can be closely tied to their roles or responsibilities of their work. There's a feeling of loss and grief with job interruption or job loss. There's feelings of being judged, fear about the future and the unknown progress of recovery, or daily activities and contact with family and friends becoming difficult or changing or the challenges of constantly having to educate others about it, what it's like to live with a brain injury. 
In November 2019, Brain Injury Canada circulated a survey to capture the experience of those living with brain injury and returning to work. The intention of the survey was not just to collect numbers, but to get true, honest feedback. Firstly, we asked respondents if they had attempted to return to work. 59% said yes, 41% said no. We asked about the top challenges or barriers they experienced with returning to work. Some of the physical barriers included loss of cognitive ability, memory and speech impairments, mobility issues, fatigue, both physical and cognitive, headaches, and noise and light sensitivity. Some of the social barriers included loss of support from family, stigma, lack of awareness from employers and staff, social office interactions, and ongoing court battles. And some of the environmental Barriers included employers or HR ignoring medical information or not taking it seriously, workplace refusing accommodations, transportation issues, and not being given time for medical appointments. We also asked what were you most concerned about when it comes to returning to work. Again, we see the psychosocial concerns such as fear of being mocked or called stupid, being accepted and valued as part of the team, being stigmatized, losing the respect they worked for years to build, the physical concerns such as having the required stamina or capacity to do the job, being able to keep up with pace and remembering their skills or knowledge, safety and possible re-injury, and lack of filter, which is a common behavior issue associated with brain injury. And then not surprisingly, there were concerns about accommodations, accessibility, and working with their employer. The next question we asked was, does your employer have a policy in place to provide for reasonable accommodation in the workplace? 28% said yes, 38% said no, and 32% said they were uncertain. The answer are not, are not surprising here. This does not, does not seem to be a focus for employers or for employees to develop a plan or become familiarized with the plan until there is an absolute need. So we often focus on the barriers or challenges, but it is also very insightful to find out what did help and how that can be built upon. So we asked what helped with your return to work experience? Supportive friends and family and network, gradual return to work and working within limits, accommodation plan, fewer sound distractions and limited interactions, breaks as needed, flexible scheduling, an environment that understands brain injury, and acceptance from the individual that tasks may take longer now. So the next question also is really helpful to build on as people reflect on what they wish they had known as they plan their return to work. Somebody to explain what to expect, importance of rest and how tired they would be, that recovery takes a long time, how hard even simple tasks can be, not to return to work too early, their workplace had no policy for injuries at work, that there wouldn't be as much judgment or rumors as feared, expecting to get back to their old self only creates frustration and despair, proper assessments and modified work environment, and acceptance. This is a real quote from a respondent. I'll never be like I was, but things do get better and you just have to keep working towards your goals. The last question we asked was, what questions would you like to have answered, have answered regarding your return to work? These are great questions and many were the basis for the creation of content on our new resource website. How do you navigate when you're injured? What kind of assistance, accommodation, or benefits are available? Are there advocates and support workers to help? What have other people done that's worked for them? How do I explain brain injury more easily to colleagues? Where can I get help if my employer does not accommodate me? What are my legal rights? Is there any research or guidelines readily available for best or successful practices? Is there a network of employers who have welcomed back individuals with brain injury and how challenges and successes can be shared and celebrated? While the survey was based on the employee experience, there needs to be an equal amount of work done on education awareness and supports for employers. There are information and knowledge gaps on both sides of the equation. So what is the path forward? This is an all hands on deck issue. And this is, while this is not an exhaustive list, but it is a good starting point. Awareness and empathy and destigmatization, increased resources and supports for navigating the return to work process, increased resources and supports for navigating benefits, insurance, and funding programs. Often people with brain injury are left to navigate this on their own. Create more opportunities for job retraining, mentoring, and coaching, employee and employer education programs and resources, peer support network for employees and employers, 
and best practices or standards on accommodation and accessibility. This is just a glimpse into the challenges of living with a brain injury, and there is still so much work to be done. Please visit our website at www.braininjurycanada.ca for extensive sections on returning to work, as well as more information for individuals, families, and healthcare and service providers on brain injury. Thanks very much, and have a great day.